Hello guys, welcome to Deep Codes and in today's video we will discuss lead code question 2187 that says minimum time to complete trips. So here you are given one time item where time of i denotes the time taken by the ith bus to complete one trip. Okay, and you are also given one another parameter that is total trips. That means this many number of trips that uh, all bus should complete. Okay. So this total trips denotes the number of trips all buses should complete and we need to return minimum time required for all buses to complete at least total trips. Okay. See so, and uh, yeah, each bus travels independently and yeah, uh, if they complete one trip, this uh, begin uh, success, uh, successively begin the another trip. Okay. See the thing here is that these are the total number of trips. Let's say five trips here and there, there are three buses. Uh, and the time for the first bus to complete one trip is one second. This is two second and this is three second. So this all the three buses are different time to complete the trips. And we have total we have to complete uh, how many trips? Five trips. So let's say if there are only one bus, only this bus, then how much time will it take to complete all these five trips? Five seconds. Simple as it is. In five seconds, it will complete five trips. This if uh, if, if it was only this second number bus, second index bus with it time to second how many time it will take it will take 10 seconds to complete five trips simple as it is and 15 uh, and 15 seconds for this bus now here all the three bus ca combined can be run okay so uh, how many time it will will they all take to complete total trips five see in not independently five they all will combine some contribute some to the number of or the count of total trips and yeah, at the end we need to make five so as you can see at a at a first second only the first bus will complete one trip at a time two first bus will complete two trips and the second bus will complete one trip at a time three first uh, bus will complete three trip second bus will complete one trip and third bus will also complete one trip so as you guys can see after the end of third second the total trips completed would be five three plus one plus one five trips so yeah that's why we written five to our answer so i hope you guys got the question the understanding so here there is only one bus right so and total trips are one then we, that's why we return two into one that is two to our answer so if here the total trips would be 10 then we would do two into 10 that's so 20 would be our answer okay so uh, i hope you have some basic understanding till now one three seven uh, five seven four okay this is the time for each bus and total trips here are let's say seven trips now you need to find total uh, total time to complete seven trips okay so if you uh, at the first second t equal to one you will complete uh, only one trip only this trip at t equal to two this would be the condition two trips would be complete will be completed by the first bus at t equal to three uh, three trips will be completed and this will also complete one trip four then three uh, this would be four one zero zero and one one trip would be completed by this bus and t equal to five you will see that five here how many trips were there six total six trips were there <coughs> so we again have to move ahead so this will complete five trips this will complete one this will also complete one okay so as you guys can see here total number of trips are five six or eight eight so this is greater than equal greater than equal to seven so yeah this condition is satisfied so we return our answer that five is our answer here so i hope you guys got this this is simple as it is now if you take a look uh, at a broader view see here you have this type of time array given okay so what can be the uh, highest time uh, a bus can take to complete total number of trips <coughs> highest time can be this highest value seven into this total trip seven so that is 49 so uh, uh, but this can be this is our highest limit so guys this is our higher limit this is the maximum time a bus is taking from this area into if it this that bus will complete all the trips then this is the total amount of time it we will take and the lower limit lower limit will be always like uh, let's keep in mind it it can we can take it as one okay lower limit can be one uh, and we, our answer will lies only between lower and higher limit okay so if you might have confused that why we should try keeping a lower limit as one and not one into seven why lower limit is not one into seven here because as you guys can see in less than seven that is five seconds we got our answer so we should keep lower limit as one okay simple as it is 
So here lower limit is one. This that is the minimum time taken by a bus to complete a trip from this area. So yeah, we take we we took L as that time. Okay, and not L into seven because consecutively other bus will also travel, and we can get better answer than that. As you guys can see, five is a better answer than seven. So yeah, our lowest would be the time uh, taken by that bus. That is lowest. So guys, as you uh, might have uh, understood till now, that we have some lower limit and our higher limit, and our answer will lies between them. And whenever you have something like this, our uh, uh, our when our our answer lies between lower and higher limit, we can do what? We can do binary search on answer. See, no other approach except binary search on answer will work here. If you think of a DPO approach or recursive plus DPO approach, then it won't work because there is nothing like choices and the length of the array is ten to the power five. So n square approach won't work. So you have to something uh, think something like log n log n. So yeah, that's why. <clears throat> the only approach that is remaining is binary search on answer, and also you have some upper lower limit and higher limit, and your answer will lie lies between them lower and higher. So we can easily do binary search on answer. So taking an intuition uh, on this is easy is what I think because if you have thought of how we would solve them, uh, and if you have tested for other approaches like recursion, DP, uh, or something like that, then it won't work. Means there are no hints that justify that DP or recursion will apply. So after that, if you have th th thought of this lower and higher limit. That what can be the maximum possible answer? What is can be the least possible answer? And our answer will always lie between this lower and higher. Then yeah, you will get some idea of binary search on answer. So here what we will do, we will do. So there are many elements like lower is the starting, then uh, time one, time two, time three, time four, up to time n, then higher. So these are the different possible times between the lower and higher. So in binary search, as you know that we jump, make bigger jumps. Then as per our answer, we move from left, right. Uh, and this way, so our what would be our condition uh, to move left and right? So here we will simply check that uh, how many number of trips are possible at each time at time t. Here, so let's say if the number of trips possible at a time t is x, and if x is greater than equal to total trips that we have to make, then what we would do? We would move left, move left or lower t, lower as the time. We will check for lesser time, and if we are at any time t whose uh, total trips are x and which is less than total uh, total trips, x is less than total trips. Then we will move towards the right, where we would increase time. Okay, simple as it is, nothing much big deal. So this is how we will check. And now let me show you the code for better understanding. See here, I here this is the binary search. Uh, firstly, what I did, I just sorted the time of the e time of the bus, and then I took high as the maximum time into uh, tt, that is total trips. Here and the low as a one. See low also you can take what you can also take it as time of zero that is the minimum time uh, a bus will take here in this time array okay and we will iterate between low and high so yeah and this is one function can complete so this function will return a boolean value so here I pass all the buses then the total trips and the mid so mid here is the current time or uh, uh, and so here uh, what I did I simply counted. That if this is the time, then how many trips a bus will complete? So I have stored this in account. So let's say uh, if uh, t equal to, for this first example, I am telling that let's say if t equal to, let's say five, and this is the time array we are given. So how many trips can be completed by this first uh, by this bus with a one second? It would be simple, just time divided by uh, time taken by this bus. So it is five divided by one. So five trips. This will complete five divided by two. That is two trips. And this will complete five divided by three. That is one trip. So total count is eight. Eight is greater than equal to total trips. Yeah, eight is greater than equal to total trips. So we move towards the left. High equal to mid minus one, and we check for better answer. That is t equal to three. Yeah, something like this. So yeah, this is how uh, this binary search will works, and this can complete function. This is simply taking, uh, counting the maximum trip the ith bus can take, but in maximum time t. Okay, and yeah, if the count is greater than t t, then we will return true as false. So this is a simple binary search here. Nothing complex going on. Uh, and yeah, and now talking about the time and space complexity. The time complexity for this question is, uh, it's it's what we go off. Let's assume that uh, maximum of time is m, and this is tt. So it is m into tt. This is what it is. Higher limit. M maximum time into tt is what travel uh, total trips. And second thing is, internally we are uh, this will take big of n time. N is the size of this time so it will be big and into n okay so this would be log of n log of this thing 
m into t into n because it internally it, we are traversing this for n so this is would be the time complexity and the space complexity is a big o of one as we are not storing anything so this is the time and space complexity log of m into t t into n okay so yeah, i hope you guys understood the question the approach it is it was a simple question according to me and yeah once if you have cracked the binary search and answer logic if you have practiced more question on uh, binary search and answer then you will simply uh, get the idea for this question and also the time complexity here it's simple to calculate here so that's all for this video make sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel and if you have any doubts then do let me know in the comment section thank you